Dirty dealings, corporate battles, consumer woes. This is Evening 5. Ananda Krishnan, a billionaire tycoon with an empire stretching from telecommunications to oil and gas, passed away on Thursday at the age of 86. He passed away peacefully, according to a statement issued by his private vehicle, Usahar Tagas, adding that the family wishes to mourn in private. Usahar Tagas said he made significant contributions to nation building and the corporate world, adding that his philanthropic initiatives have touched many lives. Last ranked Malaysia's six richest man by Forbes with a net worth of 5.1 billion US dollars. Ananda made most of his wealth during the 1980s and the 1990s that made him closely associate with former PM Tun Dr. Mahade Muhammad. Ananda's holdings include telecommunications group Maxis, pay TV operator Astro Malaysia Holdings and oil free services firm Bumi Armada. Ananda shied away from the media spotlight for most of his life even as his businesses grew. He shuttled between Malaysia and France where he spent most of his time with his wife. His only son is a Buddhist monk in Thailand while his two daughters were not interested in taking over his businesses according to media reports. A self-made tycoon often referred to as AK was known for his deal-making acumen and capital market moves. He had largely stepped away from active roles prior to his death, leaving most of the day-to-day operations to his lieutenants led by Lim Gi Kyung. Born on April 1st, 1938 in Brickfields, Ananda had a MBA from Harvard Business School. He started in oil trading and helped to create national oil firm Petronas back in 1974. It was during Made's administration that he made his mark in corporate Malaysia, transforming the Kuala Lumpur skyline, developing a horse race course in the KL city centre. In the 1990s, he ran once listed Tanjong with interests in lottery, power plants and property. Today, the private company operates TGV Cinemas and owns Manara Maxis. He founded Miasat, Maxis and Astro, all within the same decade. Ananda delisted Maxis in 2007 before relisting the telco two years later in a record-breaking initial public offering raising over 11.2 billion ringgit. In 2012, Tanjung sold its power business to 1MDB for more than 8 billion in a deal widely panned as being overpriced. His fortune also suffered a blow in 2018 when authorities in India launched a probe into a massive corruption scandal. While a warrant was issued for Ananda, he was never arrested nor extradited to India. CIMB Group Holdings, Malaysia's second largest bank by assets, saw its debt profit for its third quarter improved by nearly 10% year on year to 2.03 billion thanks to healthy growth in both net interest income and non interest income. Net interest income ticked up 1.8% year on year, while net fees and commission income grew 9.2%, and other non interest income surged 28%. There was no dividend declared for this quarter. Total gross loans growth also came in steady at 4.3% year on year, and according to CIMB, underpinned by strong demand across markets, while deposits increase marginally year-on-year. Year. Cost-to-income ratio improved 40 BPS to 45.9% as the bank kept operating expenses under control. Asset quality also improved as gross-impaired loans ratio fell to 2.3% in September 2024 compared to 3.2% in the same period last year, while allowance coverage increased to 102.6% from 95%. The Common Equity Tier 1 Capital Ratio, a measure of a bank's capital strength increased by 60 BPS in September 2024 to 15%, well within CIMB's FY 2024 target. Group CEO Novan Amiruddin said that the bank will remain vigilant in managing risks amid economic headwinds and market volatility. Novan added that the group aims to strengthen its deposit franchise and embark on the theme of simpler, better, faster throughout its business. Axiata Group returned to the black in the third quarter as currency gains and other one-off items offset a decline in operating income. Net profit for the quarter came in at 976.67 million versus a net loss of 797.41 million a year earlier. The company booked foreign exchange gains on financing totaling 1.03 billion ringgit and another 306.1 million from early redemption of debt. In contrast, revenue came in 5.3% lower at 5.32 billion 
billion, which the telco attributed to the depreciation of the Indonesian rupiah and Bangladeshi taka against the ringgit. Aksiata said it would meet its target of mid-single digit growth in revenue, while earnings before interest and tax would come in ahead of its aim for a mid-teens increase. No dividend was declared for the quarter. Group CEO and Managing Director Vivek Sud said that while Aksiata acknowledges challenges such as heightened competition in Indonesia and Malaysia, uncertainties in Bangladesh and funding requirements for fibre development in Indonesia, the group remains optimistic. He added that Aksiata foresees potential opportunities from stabilising currencies, synergy extraction from merged companies and sustained benefits from portfolio optimization and asset monetization. Sime Darby's net profit for its first quarter of FY 2025 jumped 36% year-on-year to $800 million, mainly on profit contributions from the UMW division and gain on disposal of Malaysia Vision Valley land. Quarterly revenue rose 30.6% to 18.3 billion ringgit. No dividend was declared for the quarter. The group said that quarterly core net profit also increased, with the UMW division contributing $214 million in profit before interest and tax, primarily from its auto automotive business in Malaysia. For the quarter under review, the industrial division recorded a pre-tax profit of $343 million, reflecting a marginal decrease of 4.2%. According to Syme, while the group's business in Australasia recorded lower profits, mainly due to the impact of a parts price reduction, this was partially offset by contributions from two new subsidiaries, on-site rental group and CAV Power Group. The Motors division reported an overall profit before income tax of $190 million in the first quarter, a drop of 6.4% from the same period last year. Strong electric vehicle sales in Singapore helped offset challenges in other markets. Syme said it is already benefiting from contributions from the Toyota and Borodua businesses. Group CEO Dato Jeffrey Salim Davidson said that the company had also successfully lowered its inventories during the quarter following its inventory reduction initiatives, which resulted in higher operating cash flow. Bank Nagara has required insurers and takaful operators to review their current repricing strategies for more reasonable implementation, Banama reports. The central bank said that included managing increases in premiums or contributions over time by taking into account the impact on policy owners or takaful participants. In addition, ITOs are required to offer viable options for policy owners or takaful participants who are significantly impacted by the higher premiums or contributions to continue having insurance or takaful full coverage. BNM was responding to the recent public uproar over the repricing of medical and health insurance and takaful products. BNM said further details on the available options will be announced by the insurance or takaful industry soon. The central bank acknowledged that the cost of healthcare has risen significantly, adding that all the relevant stakeholders, including the ITOs and the Ministry of Health, to name a few, must cooperate with BNM to achieve this. BNM goes on to say that it remains committed to ensuring that the public continues to have access Access to suitable insurance and takaful products. Local media reported recently that medical insurance premiums had expected to spike by 40 to 70% next year, forcing some policyholders to consider terminating their policies.